Okay, so this is going to be a really brief tutorial just covering the basic interface of Catalyst, which is the um, software that sets up the CAM set for the Dimension 3D printers. Uh, so you can see I already have the interface open here. If we look at this, um, it's just basically ready to go. We need to open up a file first. So I'm going to go ahead and go file. Uh, the way that this works is it takes SDLs. Um, there's going to be another demo somewhere along the lines that talk, talks about creating closed watertight objects uh, in a modeling software. But uh, suffice to say, for this tutorial, we're assuming that you already know how to do that. You've created that geometry. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open an STL. I already have one prepared, the pepper shaker that I've got 3D printed. Um, so we go ahead and open up this file, and it immediately appears in here. Um, and you have a couple of things that you need to look at immediately once you get into the software. Um, if you can start to see any really dark geometries, I mean, this is obviously, I spent the time and modeled this really nice and cleanly. Um, as you orbit around, if you see any bad geometries or anything like that, they're going to be highlighted by being either very dark or um, being completely transparent. So if you can see into your model, um, that's a bad sign. and That means you need to go back into Rhino or whatever modeling software. Um, you may have some surface orientation problems or you may just have not uh, good meshes to be in with. You may need to remodel some components of that. Uh, it's important to know that you don't have to have, when you guys are setting this up your files, you don't have to have one closed mesh. Uh, when you export for the geometries, you can have as many of those meshes as you want, so it's something you want to pay attention to as well. Um, on the right-hand side here, we have layer resolution, uh, the model type, and all this. These are general settings. Um, this is uh, not, it's, I think this is 4 microns is the way that this is, uh, or 20 microns, something thick. Um, not incredibly high resolution 3D printer at this point, uh, given where the technology is at, but we can go ahead and we'll just go with uh, hundredth of an inch. You'll be able to see this when the, the final prints are done. Um, you have an opportunity here to do whether or not the model is solid interior or sparse. It depends on what it is you're doing. Uh, if you're doing a large volume uh, where you're encasing a lot uh, and you have don't have a lot of sort of thin walls, then go sparse. You can save yourself some material and ultimately a lot of money. Um, this has actually uh, very thin interior walls, so about an eighth of an inch thick. Um, when you are modeling the geometry, um, for certain, for this 3D printer, the SST768, the one that we have, um, it's really about 0.1 inches is the minimum that you could want to go before it starts to get really um, sketchy and starts to air out the printer. Um, for a lot of that, that varies from printer to printer, so that's going to be something you want to kind of talk to the technician who runs it when you guys are setting up your files. Uh, th this particular model has a breakaway support system, so we can do a basic, sparse, uh, or smart. Uh, you can also surround it if you're um, super interested in uh, using a lot of support material. I've never actually uh, come across a situation where surrounding it was the appropriate thing to do. I usually go with sparse or uh, smart. So uh, number of copies, obviously, uh, we'll get another opportunity down the road to change, add more there. Uh, you can set your units. Uh, if you haven't done so in the model, usually the software will actually ask you. And then if you need to do any additional scaling within here that's sort of simple or basic, you can do that as well. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to send this and add this to the pack. So I'm going to just click once I, now that I've got this file ready to go. And I... Uh, running through and processing that uh, information. You can see it's slicing and dicing. Uh, so this is going to take a few seconds, and you can see it processing down here maybe at the bottom window. Uh, what it's doing is it's taking the geometry and slicing it up into layers, uh, and then it's going to build the model from the bottom up, and then from the top down, create support structures for that, uh, the build. And then it's going to create tool paths for that to actually be created and synthesized on. Uh, so it, it controls the head of the machine. Okay. And then once this is done processing, this should uh, appear in our pack. And we'll go ahead and get over to that. Uh, another thing we can look at while this is processing, uh, you can also look at the, in the orientation tab here. You can start to uh, also do a lot of the view editing, and you can start to see some of these tool paths starting to emerge in here. And this gives you a sense of what the resolution of the 3D print is actually going to start to look like. And these large areas in here, it's going to be, um, you can be able to see where the sort of tube to toothpaste um, type material is uh, being extruded into that. All right, and it looks like our guy is 
done. So we can go into our pack and so uh, we have our bed here. Uh, our particular 3D printer is 8 inches by 8 inches by uh, 12 inches. So you can see this is divided into um, 2 by 2 grid and then you can go up to 12 inches tall. And so there are a couple things you want to pay attention to in here. Uh, the first thing is it's giving us some details, telling us how much model material we're going to use, how much support material we're going to use, and then how long it's going to take. Um, these are estimates. Um, the model and support are generally very accurate, but the time is usually, uh, at least on our 3D printer, about an hour, uh, plus or minus. Uh, the nice thing about this, though, is when it is done, you can pop it out. Unlike the uh, Zico printers, you don't have to let them bake for an extra hour. Uh, so this will take about five hours to 3D print. Um, again, we get another opportunity where we can, uh, if we want to take this and we can create a duplicate, create another copy. So if you have more 3D prints you want to do, you can do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and remove that. Also, uh, this creates a CMB file. So if we wanted to take this, we could also insert other CMB files if we wanted to run a batch or do uh, multiples. So the nice thing about this is this is now a distinct file that can be combined with other files to, um, to create the, the 3D print that we want. And, um, and so once we are in this setup, we uh, obviously I'm not connected to, well, that's not obvious, but I'm not connected to a, a 3D printer at this point. So it says disconnected. Um, in here, if we were connected, you'd be able to see how much model material was available and how much support material was available. Um, and then compare those two, you'd be able to know whether or not you would actually need to have more material available for 3D print, uh, or if you'd have to change the cartridge while it was printing. Uh, and then we can do some other tabs in here. You can check in if you need to do any kind of maintenance and stuff, but uh, usually there's a tech to do that, but this would be where you can start to do some general stuff as well. All right, and then once you're done with that and you've plugged it into the 3D printer, um, an important step to note in this, as you guys are going through and running Catalyst, uh, you want to make sure that you uh, plug in the 3D printer to the machine before you start Catalyst. Otherwise, it won't connect to the 3D printer. Um, so if we were to go through this process, we could close down Catalyst, plug in the 3D printer, and restart Catalyst. It takes uh, a few seconds to boot up, and then just import, um, literally drop the CMB file that we uh, spent all that time processing. Uh, and then we'll get connected. And then once we're done with that, we basically come over here and just hit print. It will send the files to the machine, and you should see some uh, that register on the machine as you guys are going through it. Uh, just follow the prompts, and then it should be able to get that set up. But that's the essentially the basics, everything you need to know about Catalyst. It's a really nice sort of all-in-one software.